Hi guys and welcome to this video that talks about how to get started with your research project. Um, I know that this could be a little bit overwhelming. Um, you're literally using the Feynman technique um, or the five hour rule to learn MLA and now you're expected to write about it and not only write about it but also to incorporate research. So I wanted to do this video to help you guys out with this um, and just kind of tell you a little bit about what I'm expecting you guys to do and essentially to show you that you have done lots of this stuff already. So we're gonna get started here. And of course, I'm gonna explain some of the steps that you should be doing or should incorporate some in some way. Um, one of the things you want to be doing here is brainstorming, um, because you may have, um, you may have, um, used these rules or these techniques here and you're wanting to start research, but you can't do research until you figure out kind of what your thesis is. And so what I'm going to do is kind of tell you a little bit about uh, the step here um, and tell you that your thesis, your thesis is a working thesis at this point, right? Your thesis does not become a solidified thesis until you turn it in for a grade. And what that means is that at any point you can change this thesis. So say that you have a, a thesis that you're putting together um, and you have decided that the Feynman technique is better than the five hour rule. And so you're gonna say the Feynman technique, um, despite the five hour rule being, um, being sp specific, the Feynman technique is a better way of practicing because of three reasons, right? Um, that you've you've have found in your brainstorming, and then you have these three reasons, and maybe you're researching this and you're thinking, you know what? Um, I know I said the Feynman technique was good, but in my research, I'm finding that it may not be as good as I thought it was. Um, and so then you can change your thesis, right? So that's what I mean about a working thesis. You can change at any time. So I don't want you to be married to a thesis unless it is for sure that you have found information that's going to help you, okay? So you're gonna brainstorm Feynman versus the five hour rule. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please go back to your um, go back to your assignment sheet so that you know. And after you brainstorm, and, you, and the brainstorming is literally, it's comparing and contrasting because it is a compare and contrast paper. You're gonna compare and contrast these two techniques, the Feynman, this Feynman technique and the five hour rule. Which one is better for practicing a skill? right? Is the Feynman technique better? Is the five hour rule better? So you're going to compare and contrast there. And that means you're going to do like a Venn diagram. I know in, um, in, uh, one of the other lesson videos, when I, I think I compared Skittles to Starburst or something like that, I used a T chart. Um, you can do that as well. And it's really, really helpful. Now, remember, when you're doing a compare and contrast essay, the strength of the essay comes from the brainstorming, the thesis, and the structure. If one of those things is wrong, the paper falls apart. So do not skip the brainstorming part. Okay, so we have step one, the brainstorming, and this is what we're doing. After we do the brainstorming and we have the working thesis, then what we want to do is think about the structure which structure is best? And I can say, I can give you a couple of hints, um, or I, not hints, but like there's two, only two really that you can, you can do. You can do the point by point or the side by side. They both kind of sound the same, but, um, the point by point seems to be the one where most people do the best at. 
um, just from my experience, um, I, it just makes better sense with the thesis and the structure where you have it, it have it with your three body paragraphs, your three points and within those three points, you'll compare and contrast each thing rather than this with the two body paragraphs. And so you see this and you're thinking, hmm, I, I would rather do two paragraphs and three paragraphs. It's not whether one, one is shorter than the other, because really, in essence, they're both the same length, <laughs> the same length paper. It's just which one is going to be easier for you to explain things. And I am finding just based on what I'm grading right now of your compare and contrast essays, that the point by point, those who have done the point by point with the three body paragraphs are doing a lot better than those who are doing the side by side, just an aside. So you picked a structure and you're doing this structure and then you're, you're literally going to plot this out. or do an outline, right? Um, and again, this is a working outline because at this point, again, this is a research paper and we're going through a research process. And the thing with the research process is that it's constantly changing. Just like say your writing process, everybody has a different writing process and most people have different research process. The whole idea with the research is that you want to be organized with it. Okay. But pretty much you really just want to have working documents, like a working thesis or a working outline and don't be married to things, be flexible with it because it may be that while you're working, you're doing your structure and maybe you're doing the point by point and you're looking at your thesis and everything's vibing. And then maybe as you're researching or as you're thinking about writing things out, um, something's not going well. Maybe that third body paragraph is just not working and you need to find another reason, right? So then you're going to change your outline to add another reason, right? So just be flexible. So after you do the brainstorming and you decide on the structure and you do a working outline and remember, I'm going to put this here. This is what we did with, um, a PowerPoint. We did this with PowerPoint. Um, and we did an activity with this in PowerPoint. So you can actually use that as well. Oh, you can just write this out on a piece of paper, right? Um, or you can actually just do it in a word document. However you want to do it, we used PowerPoint because I thought it was easier because you can actually move that PowerPoint around if you need to. Um, and you can actually use each slide of a PowerPoint or a Google slide almost as a, as a paragraph um, and outline, with, outline your things within the paragraph that way. You can do that. Um, so just however you feel like doing the structure. So as you do the structure, then you are now doing research. And so when you do research, you're going to start off with keywords and research strategy. And that is what we learned. I think it was week three or four. We learned it very early keywords and research strategy. And this just like, these are the words you're going to put in, um, a search engine, right? Or the database. And I'll teach you how to get into that here in a second. So that's what you want to do. And these are not only words, but also phrases. You're going to brainstorm these as well and create a list. And of course, this is a working list because everything is a working document of some sort. And what I mean by working list in this context is that as you are researching, um, you're going to make adjustments, right? And I will show you that as well. So you're going to do brainstorming structure research. And then as you're doing this research, you are going to summarize and paraphrase. 
And this is why we learn this, all right? We learn summary and paraphrase because you don't want to get in trouble. Don't use quotes unless they are powerful and useful. Because guess what? According to your assignment, you only get, I believe it's two quotes. Uh, we'll have to go back and look. I think it's two quotes or maybe three quotes. Um, I think it's three quotes actually. Three quotes. Look on assignment. <laughs> All right. Just double check with the assignments. It's, I think it's three quotes, one line each right so that means you cannot use any more than three quotes and each of those quotes has to be one line each so if you have a quote that goes two lines and that means it goes from this part this end of the document to that end of the document then you can't use that quote and no this is not cumulative so that means that oh i'm just only going to use half a line here and then for this other quote i'm going to use this other half a line and then this other quote i'm only going to use part of this line which means i've only used a line and a half which means i can have more quotes no we're not we're not doing that we're not doing that all right so we're going to summarize and paraphrase the research and we're going to put this you can use this in a document and as you document this, um, so you can use Word or notebook to put this stuff in there. And as you document, we're also going to cite as we go, right? Because you can't, you don't know what your in-text citation is going to be until you know what's going to, what it's going to look like on the work cited. So we're going to cite this and guess what? <laughs> it's a working work cited page right again working work cited why because we may have a source that we love but then it may not work <laughs> and so we have to find another one and so working work cited so cite as you go you need to do that okay so we have all that wonderful yay and so we do all this. Oh, one more thing I want to talk about when it comes to your research. Um, you're going to, it's, let me explain it this way. When you are looking for, for research, you're probably wondering, what am I looking for specifically? I find it's easier to explain this as data, right? And data comes in two forms. And, and I'm going to spell this wrong. Anecdotal. I spell it wrong every single time. Anecdotal. That's not how you spell it. Anecdotal. Let's leave it that way. <laughs> Anecdotal evidence, right? And these are like stories or examples right? Something that you can, someone, you can say, oh, well, this person um, got a hundred by using the Feynman technique. Um, and so that is data or evidence that's anecdotal. You know, there's no, it's not hard evidence, it's anecdotal evidence. And then you want something that is like number space. It's called data, but it's like statistics, you know? So that's like, that's like five out of 10 and students pass the course using the Feynman technique. It's measurable, right? There's some stats next to it. There's numbers attached to it. It is like a study of some sort. 
So when you're looking at, say, arguing a point, because what you're doing here um, with a research compare and contrast is you're doing a little bit of an argument. Yes, compare and contrast essays aren't really arguments. What they are are their, uh, their analysis. You're analyzing one side over the other. But you're adding the element of argument here by adding evidence or data into your compare and contrast essay. So you're saying one side is better than the other and you're using data to prove it, right? You're not using um, your thoughts or your theories or your opinions per se, like perhaps you did in your, in your first compare and contrast essay. You gave kind of your insights, you did some critical thinking and you kind of added to that but you're going to use actual data, anecdotal data, of which I, obviously I cannot spell, and then data, data, hard numbers, statistics, that type of stuff. So this is what you are looking for, right? This is exactly what you are looking for. You wanna make sure that, um, that when you say, say you go into the databases or you go on Google, cause you are allowed to go on Google, Make sure that you use viable sources because, again, I'm going to say if there is one unviable source, say like you use a um, you use Reddit or Wikipedia, that invalidates your entire research, which gives you a zero for the for the paper. So make sure double, triple check that it is a viable source. Um, and so when you when you have those sources, yeah, it's just going to be a better paper. Okay, I'm done talking about this part. I'm, I'm, let's recap right quick to, to make sure you get everything. You're going to start by brainstorming this assignment. Um, and you're going to do, you're going to go and see, uh, talk about the Feynman technique and the five hour rule. You would have by now already tried one or both of these. Hopefully you've tried both of these so you can, so it's, it helps you with your research. Then you're going to have a working thesis. Um, and of course, all of these documents we're talking about are working thesis. And remember that your thesis for a compare and contrast essay um, talks about the other side, declares a winner, and then tells us why the winner is the winner. It gives us three reasons why the winner is the winner. Then you want to compare and contrast. And you, this is part of your brainstorming. This is not something you need to turn in. You're going to do a Venn diagram or a T-chart, much like, similar to, almost actually exactly like what we learned in the lesson. Then you're going to pick a structure, either the point by point or the side by side. I'm suggesting the point by point because students in general do better with the point by point than the side by side. And once you check your structure, you have your structure, you're going to create a working outline. And you can create your working outline however you would like to do it. We've done we've done it in, in with PowerPoint in class, but you can do paper pen, you can use Word, you can use post-it notes. I've actually have been in my office back pre-COVID, and students have sat in my office and we have used up many, many of little booklets of post-its and have just put it on my wall and moved it around as we worked on the essay together. So that's another way of doing it. Then of course, you begin your research. So I want you to notice that you have to do all of this pre-work before you even start your research. You gotta, you have to um, do your keywords and search strategy um, and keep track of the words and phrases you use that you can put in the search engine or in the databases. You wanna brainstorm and create your working list of words and phrases. This is going to, this part is going to take a while, right? This is not, this is not something you may want to do in an afternoon or do a quick Google search and you have three articles and then you're fine. You, you want to pick the best of the best. Um, you want to also go through it and summarize and paraphrase good information. We do this so we don't get in trouble with plagiarism. We also want to be a, we want to be judicious with the quotes that we use. We want to use powerful, impactful quotes, stuff that we cannot paraphrase. We don't want to just pick a quote um, out of the ether or pick a quote in the middle of the, of the 
of the article stick into our paper and it could be easily paraphrased. You know it's a good and powerful quote when you cannot easily paraphrase and you can't move on to the other part of your paragraph. You really need to use this because you're proving a point. And so that is when you um, incorporate quotes. And then we're going to create a working works cited page. Um, so we're going to cite as we go so we know where all the stuff is coming from. And we know how to do our in-text citations when we're ready to write. Um, and then we're as we're researching, we're going to look for two types of evidence. Um, we're going to look for anecdotal and we're going to teach Professor Fernandez how to spell this word. I mess it up every single time. Um, we're going to look for anecdotal evidence and anecdotal evidence are stuff like stories or examples. For example, if we come across an article that says, you know, 20% of students or sorry, it says little Johnny Walker um, is an expert at the Feynman technique and he has used the Feynman technique to become a civil engineer. That is anecdotal. It is a story. It is an example that shows what we are, what we are uh, arguing, right? Versus data. We have the data evidence, which is numbers based. It's statistics. You know, five out of 10 students pass the course using the Feynman technique that is measurable, right? This type of data is measurable. All right. So we have reviewed that and on to the next lesson. See you there.